Welcome back, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk, episode number 43. Stop hitting the table like that, thank you, because <laughs> you're causing some echoes back here. Episode 43, Pastor Steve, how is it going, sir? Fantastic. Love to hear that, love to hear that. I've been great as well, too. Let's just jump right into the topic. I, I, I know how you don't like small talk, so let's just get straight into this. Um, let's get right into the word, people. Let's get right into the word. Let's talk about something that everybody has had before, have. Everybody's had? Had before. Oh, okay. Okay? <laughs> oh, this dude. All right. This is where we're at. Um, <laughs> We're going to talk about money. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, had that. Okay. Okay. Money, 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 money. Or wealth. I just feel like people just understand money better. Wealth is kind of a more of an archaic. Well, it's, it's not an archaic term. It's not but archaic at all. However, um, it's it's more relatable to people to just say money than it is to talk wealth. Um, but we do understand wealth is more contingent upon having more of assets and things yeah. like that. So you can have something other than cash that can be Regarding wealth. Assholes. Yeah, there could be some. I don't want to get into my financial background of liquid, uh, non-liquid assets. But whatever. Point is, use whoop. that degree, brother. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta pay me for, <laughs> for that information. Hey, yeah, give that free out here, no more. Uh, so, hey, that free with that gospel. Um, so, with that being said, um, we're gonna talk about money. We're gonna talk about wealth today. Um, just kind of in a general um, light, eventually we'll get into more specific things. But right now, as we work through and, and build up our viewership, we just want to talk about general information, give some good information, and then later down the road, we'll get into more specific things about these topics. So with that being said, talking about money, um, is wealth or money in and of itself sinful? No. Next. Um, do you know why I, I, I ask you that, though? Yes. Okay. The reason being is we always see this, this, this verse associated um, with... What verse? Um, well, money, is, money is evil or something? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we see I don't this, think there's a verse in the Bible that says that. That uh, money... You don't, there's not a verse that says that, that money is the root of all evil. There is not a verse okay. in the entire Bible that says money is the root of all evil. All right. Uh, so let's go. Let's go to First Timothy chapter six and let's. Uh, I want y'all to just pay attention to what's going on right now. I'm, I asked you a question: Was wealth in and of itself sinful? Because a lot of times people talk about money and, and how question, and how evil it is. Yeah. yeah no, they're, they're questioning that money is evil. Yeah, that's what we're. That's what we're trying to. And you're here. about to bring us to a verse in the Bible that says money is the root of all evil. I'm, I'm trying to bring us to a verse to try to gain clarity on why people may think this 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 type yeah, of way. Why that phrase money is the root of all evil. And why I'm asking you this that, question that, about is it sinful? That so-called verse is in the Bible. That money is the root of all evil. <laughs> well, let's go there to see. Uh, first, first Timothy chapter. I mean, six. I want you all to pay attention. What we're saying here is that Jack. <laughs> Wants us to read a verse in the Bible that says money is the root of all evil, which, you know, we're going we're gonna to have some fun here. <laughs> I, listen, I, I've heard a bunch of things about money, and, yep, and from, from certain people, it's, it's this evil thing. And it's like, so I just want to see where their mindset is going. So let's go to First, Sim First Timothy chapter 6. Um, Would you like me to read, sir? Yes. Um, let's start at verse uh, 6 and work your way down to 11. Verse 10 is the, is the phrase, but start at verse 6. So 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 11. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. I am reading from the King James Bible. That is, yeah. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction 
and perdition. See, period. thing is evil, man. That thing you, you get, if you're rich, that means you got money, right? Can you clarify? Yes or no? If you are rich, that means you have money. Yes. You can't yes. be rich without no money. Correct. Okay. And other assets. Yes, and, and other assets here. Um, that could be liquidated into cash if necessary. Thank, thank you for giving me that information. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you, that yeah, yeah. the degree that you have help, actually is worth Help me to understand that because I didn't know that. <laughs> um, great. So, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. They that will be rich. Mm -hmm. So assuming we're saying that it says those that will become rich when it says will be rich. Yeah. But they, but they that will be rich yeah. fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. These are things that are sinful, man, which drown men in destruction and perdition. All right, verse 10. Okay, so I just want you all to know that I'm going to let this guy talk for a little bit, <laughs> but then I'm going to just clarify everything for y'all, okay? So I'm going to let young Padawan do his thing and then we'll follow through. All right, let, let's go. Verse 10. All right, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which. While some coveted after, they have erred or erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereto thou art also called and hast professed, professed a good profession before many witnesses, period. Okay, so I stand corrected here that, and, and I'm in agreement with you that wealth or, or to have riches in and of itself is not evil. The verse here is addressing the love of money. Correct. Um, okay, um, can I do my follow-up question or do you wanna address nine on up before? Or are no, we good I'm enough? You, I want you to do a follow-up question, but keep in mind, people, that if you heard the dialogue, and again, if you just join in, if you're just clicking on to watch or whatever, go back to the beginning of this and recognize that the assumption has always been made when people make statements, and these statements become so-called truths, that you need to clarify this statement to see if it's actually biblical or not. He said that money is the root of all evil in the beginning of our conversation. That's correct. He said he's going to go to a verse in the Bible that emphasizes money is the root of all evil. Now, the issue what I have is, are we sure the, there is a verse in the Bible that says money is the root of all evil? Of course, we got to go to the Bible and we find out that is not what the Bible says. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So, his original question, is wealth in and of itself evil? We understand and it is not. Just to possess money is not a wrong thing. It's not a bad thing. To possess a lot of money is not a bad thing. Simply possessing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having it. Yeah. And other assets, like some, sometimes it was concubines or things like that. Is not a, <laughs> that is not an asset. Got you. Uh... Well, I mentioned that because some people were blessed with like servants and things like that. No. It, it, it referenced, no. um, so you know, so yes, uh, we do see uh, godly people blessed with wealth. We we definitely see Solomon. He was excelling with knowledge, and the Bible also says in First Kings uh, chapter ten how he had all this wealth as well too. He excelled all the kings in wealth. So if wealth was this evil thing, why would God be blessing? Bestowing that upon him. Exactly. So Solomon, we see it with Abraham. We also see it with Jacob, just to name some few, a uh, few people. With Job, in the beginning, then he loses it, then he gains it again at the at the end. So yeah, yeah. Many of the righteous kings possess great wealth. Yeah. So obviously, just to just to end that, but I, I want to now d dive deeper into a bigger conversation that I think can can even help more people. Um, a lot of people reference for the love of money, those who reference it correctly, is the root of, uh, of all evil. Mm -hmm. We have songs about it, things like that. But I don't feel like there's enough people addressing what does the love of look money like. look like? Mm -hmm. Because that can really help somebody. Sure, you may be able to, to differentiate and say, no, money ain't evil. I can get to this. 
But right. you still could be violating and still be that person who is loving money. Or when would it, when is it becoming the love of money? Absol Rather than just mere diligence yes. and I'm reaping my due diligence or, you know, um, favor comes upon me, right? And I get to enjoy that favor, that moment, whatever, you know? Right. Yes. Um, moving wisely, being a good steward and, you know, executing well, you know, whatever that may be, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. I, I think that we can all be in agreement now from the beginning of the topic up until now that, okay, wealth is nothing evil in and of itself. So then this warning here mm -hmm. and this statement and phrase, for the love of money is the root of all evil. What, is this, what does that love look like? Can I be a person who is good to society but still be a lover of money? You know, nowadays everybody's a good person. So... You know, what does it look like? Could I be a good person, you know, respectful, polite, and yet still be uh, a person who falls victim to this love of money? Can I be broke and still transgress? That's, in the that's a great point. Of that's a great point. The love of money. We always look at it like somebody being wealthy. That is a great point. And, oh, the, you know, the love of money, you know, because they're wealthy. What about if you're broke you got ten dollars in your wallet or ten dollars in your bank account you mean to tell me that somebody that has no money can't be a violator of this verse the love of money that's a that's good point discussion. because i think what you just brought out now is that it doesn't take money doesn't to have the, the love right of. it doesn't take the actual possession of money it doesn't take the actual you know i've obtained wealth and therefore I must automatically have been practicing the love of money. Right. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So, do you do you do you have anything, uh, Pastor Forrest, that can address um, what we look like for uh, what would this love of money look like? Some kind of phrase or terminology. Now, let me say something as you go ahead, as you go continue ahead, on. Go ahead, go ahead. Me personally, when I look at this, like the the love of something mm -hmm. um it's always going to be gravitated to our to our heart and our desire mm -hmm. which then has me thinking a trust something that you're going to say that again trust not like a trust fund mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but but a trust that you're going to pursue after this and put your your uh your 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 being mm -hmm into this 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 thing so what i'm saying is when you talk about you know i love god we measure that on devotion how much time how much energy sure what are you doing to pursue yeah. after this and um so when i'm looking at for the love of money and like i said you can give me pushback here on this it seems like this is a person who as it says which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows it seems like there is a a pursuing of this that they put their trust in this mm -hmm. and this trust has them going now contrary to their trust in God mm -hmm. but like I said I'm, I'm open for you to, to expound more on it but in my mindset just looking at love of money is desire and a, 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 a over pursuit that I put my trust in this correct so let's look at the phraseology that Christ uses in his and the content of his phrase that he uses in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. Okay. okay. That will help us connect the dots of what you're trying to express in regards to an overzealous pursuit or desire, a strong desire, right? Right. Excessive desire, which translates into behavior. So the excessive desire translates into behavior. That behavior is a reflection of where the content of your heart is at in regards to what you're actually um, learning to trust in or depend on. Right. You with me? The content of your heart, what you're using to depend on. Okay. You get me? Yes, the content of your heart and what you're trusting or depending on. Correct. So, Where's, if you, yeah, yeah. Uh, five, Matthew. Five. That's five, right? Uh, um, no, uh, Matthew chapter six. All right, Matthew chapter 6. Let's go. Okay. 
Verse 19 starts with Jesus, uh, again, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, he begins in chapter 5, ends at the end of chapter 7. So there's a, there's a wide range of lessons that are being articulated through what he's teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. Gotcha. At this particular point, he's now addressing something very significant. And when we, when we recognize the language or when we look at the terminologies he uses to help illustrate the thought process he's trying to get Christians to avoid, that's what we need to dial in on. Gotcha. 19, verse 19 of chapter 6 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Now, why would he say lay not up for yourselves? Like, doesn't say just possessing it, laying up for yourselves. There's a, there's a correlation of why the individual is seeking to establish, right, mm -hmm. uh, an accumulation. Lay not up for yourself. There's a sense of accumulation you're trying to build up. Why is it necessary to have it built up? You with me? Not I'm that. With you. Not that. It's not that you've uh, you have that much. But why is the the phrase "lay not up for yourselves"? There's a mindset associated with you building that accumulation for a reason. Okay. Okay. It says, "Where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal." Watch this. For where you're what. Treasure is what goes on there will your heart be also. So again, we talked about the content of the heart, right? Right now verse um, uh, Let's go to verse 24 No man can what serve two masters for either he will hate the one Right right and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon verse 25 says therefore that is so important for the reader to identify the connection or the relevance behind why 19 says lay not up for yourselves and why 20, uh, uh, 20, uh, 24 says a man cannot serve two masters. Are you with me? I'm with you. Why, why it's relevant for him to use that phrase lay not up for yourselves in verse 19. Then he says in verse uh, 21, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He then adds by saying, no man can serve two masters. You with me? I'm with you. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25, therefore. So the transition is allowing the individual to recognize or pay attention to where that person starts to think on why I need to lay up treasures. Why am I trying to build so much treasure or wealth on earth? Not that a person possesses it, it is within the reasoning of why you're building it up. You with me? Okay. Man cannot serve God and mammon. Man cannot have two masters. He will either love the one and hate the other, hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor, what your, uh, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? And, and it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. Um, and we talk about Solomon in verse 29, verse 30, about the grass of the field and how God clothes it. And verse, at the end of verse 30, he says, Shall he, meaning God, shall not God much more clothe ye, O ye of what? Little faith. Of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what are we going to put on? Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, there's another parable in Luke chapter 12, which we'll go to in a minute. Okay? But when you look at the, that whole set of verses that Jesus just outlines... When we start talking about the love of money, no words as he says, based on the accumulation of it, that you are a sinner. It's talking about the amount of time, effort, energy you put into pursuing it and why you're pursuing it. Because you're concerned about your life on earth to such a degree it has you so, you're, it has you so anxious 
you ignore your faith in God to believe that he'll take care of you, that you forsake the devotion you should have towards him of walking by faith, and you start devoting your time, energy, and effort, laying up for yourselves treasures on earth. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Because I was going to ask you at first the question of, so we can't, save any what god doesn't want us to be savers of of money when you see the lay not up mm -hmm. so i'm glad i allowed you to like walk through everything because now you start like you said you start getting to the issue isn't about accumulation now, the issue is becomes the what is the reason not, exactly You're, what's the what's what's the underlying thought process within the individual remember Oh, ye of little faith. That, that, has something, that says something about an individual's thought process in regards to their trusting in the Lord. And then so therefore when they're laying up for themselves treasures, they're concerned because take no thought for today or tomorrow. Take no thought, no ashes of what shall we eat, what shall we drink. It doesn't mean I shouldn't be going, I shouldn't wake up today and be like, you know, what am I going to cook for dinner? You know, let me pull a steak out of the freezer. Let me pull some chicken out of the freezer. He's not saying that. Mm -hmm. He's saying you're so caught, you're so anxious and you're so worried about your life. You ignore your devotion to God to stay consistent in serving him, providing help for people, offering up something that you possess for the good of other people, taking from your own wealth to those that are less fortunate, knowing that in the back of your mind, as I empty my cup, I leave room for God to fill my cup. Okay. Um, all right. Just slow, slow down there a little I bit. Got we got to go to Luke 12 also, so we'll, I'll wait, though. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, sir. What um, do you have to say, Sir Jack? <laughs> no, I just, I just wanted to go back into you addressing how... You know why a person is is trying to store up things and and what's going on and just really to get at the heart and the mind of what are, what are you doing with that? So I just want to look at two verses very quickly before we go into uh, Luke. Psalm sixty two ten says this. Psalm sixty two ten. Read. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, uh, it says, "Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. Mm -hmm. If riches increase, set. set not your heart okay. upon them." So I just wanted to. Bring out this this understanding of God even here addressing or through 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 David when riches increase set not your heart upon them don't become don't have this desire where that's your focus and that's your dependency. There's another verse I want to go to Proverbs twenty eight uh, twenty. Proverbs twenty eight twenty says, "A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he." that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. And so once again, just looking at the, the contrast, God never addressing anything being wrong with wealth or accumulation, but getting people to see there's gonna be a desire there. There's gonna be a focus. Where's your heart? Where's your dependency? In both these verses, you see one addressing Listen, riches are going to increase. Set not your heart upon this. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. There but he that maketh to be... He'll yeah, accumulate. He'll, he'll accumulate these things. But when you try to make haste to, to get rich, you shall not be innocent. God is going to look at these things against you. And so, so do you think innocent is referring to your transgressing, like, the love of money? Do you think that's what that innocent deals with? I think it's a contrast to... Uh, the person being See, I disagree there. faithful with the blessing. I disagree. With that. I'm not disagreeing with the content of the thought that you're possessing. I I disagree with how you're interpreting that verse. Oh, really, Pastor? Yeah, yeah. Well, in a good way. I'm not like here to say like you're dead wrong. I'm just I I, I would give a little pushback on that word innocent. Okay. What's Why? The pushback? Because the context, as you all well, you would know. A lot of you may not know. You know me that specifically when it comes to the Old Testament, there is context to everything that's written after the law of Moses. Meaning, when you start having the book of wisdom, the book of Psalms, the history books, right? And the, the, um, uh, the prophets, all of those utterances and premises and principles and declarations that are made contextually are confined to the standard of the Ten Commandments. Meaning, Anything you read in the Old Testament, you should be, not anything, but majority of what you're reading in the Old Testament, you should be able to 
convert it back to one of the Ten Commandments as far as in the reference of contextually understanding that principle. So when it says innocent, he that maketh haste to be rich mm -hmm. will not be innocent. I believe is referring to some of the commandments that are in the law of Moses or in the Ten Commandments. For instance, thou shalt not bear false witness, right? If I understand that somebody comes to me with a bribe to go against another person, which we see in the, in the, in the, the book of Deuteronomy, there are many verses about don't put your hand on those that are do evil and bear false witness against another person. It tells you, take not a bribe, don't take gifts. It perverts judgment or it perverts your ability to testify justly. You with me? Mm -hmm. If somebody understands, I have an opportunity to get this hundred grand real quick, real quick from this from this evil person because they want me to lie on their behalf. That's being hastily to be rich. You won't be innocent, meaning you'll actually do something corrupt to obtain those riches. Which is something sinful. Huh? What I'm saying is, I, I thought you're addressing the uh, you're addressing like the actual act of um, uh, 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 like the love of money in the sense of. I get what you're saying. So if a person just focuses on the fact that if you, I guess, I guess in its conclusion, you're going to get to what you're saying because a person who is a lover of money is going to violate, violate. Yes, they're going to violate they're those gonna, principles. You right, understand what yes, I'm so, That's what I want somebody to understand. Yeah, that, that the focus just isn't. Being hasteful is not the sinfulness. It's in the process of being hasteful, you'll, you'll see opportunities that will make you transgress the law. Or the yeah. moral, the moral code of God. Yes. I, Cover not thy neighbor's possessions. Yes. Well, I, I see somebody very wealthy. I go and I rob them. Right. That's me coveting, but that's me being greedy or lustful for wanting more, wanting somebody else's stuff. Yeah. So if you mean by haste that not in and out in that moment they're not gonna uh, transgress, I could agree there, but. Most people who have this desire right. to go to do that, it's a trickle down effect. Right. Okay. You know. I just want people to see that. No, that no. that actually is good because I wasn't probably going to go to expound further, and that is necessary. That there is more things woven in just a phrase to say, love. Don't 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 love money. You need to be able to see everything that is wrapped up into right. it. Because I have this desire for money, I will. Or money will See allow me to steps. have... Your actual original question is, how would I know if somebody is a lover of money? Yes. These are the steps. By you being hasteful and you see an opportunity to do something quick to get that quick dollar, that is you possibly actually being affected by your love for money. Rather than the judgment in your mind should be, is this honorable? Would this reflect the code of God? And if I can honestly say to myself, that would not honor God, then there might be something within your heart that is telling you that you have a, you have a desire for the love of money or you're, you're coveting money or the love of money. And that's what you're looking for when you're learning about the biblical premises that we're talking about scripturally. You want to be able to identify, how could I know if somebody is the lover of money? Again, Am I a lover of money when I only possess money? Or what's actually transpiring within the mindset or within the heart of a person who has absolutely nothing but is still a lover of money? Yeah. You can be a, a, a lover of money be dead broke. With, with 10 bucks. And, uh, uh, and you can be a person who is still honorable with 10 million. Exactly. It, you're going to have to really look at the situation and, and, and see that. Um, however... We're going to have to pick up in episode 44. Really? We're going to start off with Man. addressing um, the, the, the parable of the rich fool, which is in Luke 12. We need Luke we will, 12, y'all. We will, we will get there. But Man. I think this is a good enough – that was a good point to expound upon. I'm really glad that you did that and you gave pushback because – a lot of times we just get caught up in phrases and it doesn't break down to get people to really see. Like we'll just and you say the phrase so much that there isn't any terminology. There's nothing going on in our minds but right. just to think, lover of money, lover of money, lover of money. But now you get to see like there are gonna be some actions in which you take mm -hmm. that you're gonna start to violate against the things of God to get this. Yep. Like you said, about bribes, about uh, you know, uh well, you already talked about uh, stealing and bearing false witness, you know, um, and these things will eventually cause you to, you know, not want to rock with with a uh, God and, yeah. and violate the first. So you can see how 
in your mind, you may be thinking like, just because I obtain money doesn't mean I'm going to transgress against these things. No, but the person who is hasty, the person who's going to go after these things, this is the line of thinking. And then these are going to be your actions, which is why it says a faithful man shall abound with blessings. That faithful man is going to stay, stay uh, in the word of God. Yep, he's, stay in the moral code of God. He's going to still be honorable. He's still, he's still going to pay his tithe. He's still going to bless the poor. He's going to help the unfortunate. He's going to do a mantra like this. Do as much good as he can for as many as he can, as for as many as he can, for as long as he can. Ah. All right. I'll bet. Yeah, we'll pick this up. We'll pick this up in episode... Uh, 44 yeah episode 44 we'll uh pick this up and yeah we'll start off with the parable of the rich fool and really continue to dive into this for the love of money mindset so that we can really get people to see because eventually i want to dive into how should we be going about giving how how should that be looking now now that we can work through what it looks like to to be a lover of money and not how then should we be going about as a believer and feel comfortable maybe with wealth like why can't a christian yes. feel comfortable with wealth you're still gonna have haters but yeah. how you as an individual can feel comfortable with wealth and feel comfortable accumulating wealth right 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 um so make sure that you check out episode 44 god bless god bless y'all thank you guys for watching another episode of real talk make sure that you click the like button that you share this video that you leave a comment if you're not a subscriber, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you click the notification I was bell. Say, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can see every episode that's newly released. I don't have anything to say. He's finally stepping up as a co-host, man. God bless. <laughs>